Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in crypto and bring them out of bite-sized pieces. Today, just as the thumbnail suggests, the question has to be asked, are we in a bear market? So we're going to take a look at uh, some data that could point to we are in a bear market. Then we're going to take a look at the flip side and just say, why it's really not a big deal and there's some actually good news on the horizon. So we'll take a look at some on-chain data. We're going to define the bear market. We're going to take a look at the good news. Then we're going to talk about what's going on in the metaverse as far as Nike and then a little Voyager petition. So before we get into all that, let's take a look at what's exactly going on into the market and uh, not the greatest day. Look, it is uh, Tuesday, December 14th, almost uh, 4 p.m. Uh, Guaynabo, Puerto Rico time. And this is what we got. We've got a uh, market of a whopping 2.14 trillion. We lost around 800 billion from our all-time high, over 3 trillion. I don't know, maybe we'll find it at some point. And uh, Bitcoin price fell below 47, also fell below the 50K uh, mark, which is what we were trying to hold. Couldn't hold that. Now we might be uh, going a little bit uh, farther down, but hey, it is what it is. And uh, that's, where we, that's where we're at right now. Daily sentiment is bearish. And uh, that's, of course, as we start seeing dips and dips and pullbacks. And if we take a look at the coins uh, right now, we see a little bit of a, of a turnaround in the one hour, but not much to get excited about. I mean, 1%, 1.5 for Cardano and 0.59 for Bitcoin and 0.77 in a one hour change isn't going to get me anything excited, especially 24 hours. We're still up a little bit. Wow, Dogecoin up 16%. And you know why Doge is up 16%? Because Elon Musk said he is going to start accepting Dogecoin for payments for Teslas. So congratulations, Dogecoin holders. Uh, you're up to a whopping 18 cents. Hopefully you can get back to that 67 cents of the all-time high. Hopefully we can all get back there. Nothing against you guys. Good for you. And that's what we got as far as uh, the market itself. So not uh, the greatest place. What we're really going to do is take a look at what's going on as far as like the on-chain data. And to do that. Take a look at uh, on-chain analysis from CryptoQuant. Me and uh, Ki Young Joo, the CEO of CryptoQuant, did a nice uh, overview video of how to read these charts. But these are the ones that I like to look at. So when I'm taking a look here. What I like to see is these five to six ones. I want to take a look at all miners' outflow. What I'm trying to look at is, are they selling? And if we take a look at the day, uh, back in the day, because we can go way farther back, there was a lot of selling back here. This is probably when, you know, the big move, this was, I think, the big migration from from China uh, when they banned it again and they had to uh, sell their Bitcoins so they get over here to North America. So that made a lot of sense. And there was, a, you know, little peaks and valleys here. And then now over here, we don't see too much. But if we go into the hour, there's a little bit of selling going on. And we can see, like, uh, right here, the outflow. This is, in, this is on the hourly, looking at 54 and then 324 Bitcoin, seven Bitcoin, 161. It just depends on what the price is. And then now that it's low, we got 46, 47. So not a ton, but it's enough to uh, say, hey, they are selling and it's a, it's a fact. Also, if we take a look at uh, the Bitcoin All Exchange Reserve, well, here we are. What's interesting to me is that uh, as the price has been going down, when usually the price goes down, you see people will load up and start selling their Bitcoin and throwing it on the exchanges so they can sell and get the money and then it just stays there. But it looks like not only they're selling, but somebody or some groups or some whales are picking it back up because this number right here, the all exchange reserve for Bitcoin, they're still taking it off the exchanges. Where are they putting it? Probably cold storage. Interesting. Ethereum still going down as the price is going up. It took a dip. All exchange taker buy volume. This is interesting to me because this is where the bears and the bulls fight. And when we can see right here, we take a look at the day chart just real quick that there's a, it's pretty noisy. Let's just zoom in. You know, I, I say when in doubt, zoom out. But sometimes when you want to give yourself a heart attack, you zoom in and just look at some data only for, only for the brave. And then we take a look here that yes, there are some of these entities, people, whales, what do you want to call it? They're buying it up during like right here. It dropped massively, and they said, well, we'll buy that because we want some more gains. They probably wrote it up here and then sold it again. That's what traders do. That's what leverage positions do. And then right over here, when it dropped again, you got a lot of people buying up this dip right here. So interesting. And then this is the one that concerns me out of all else. And I've always talked about this, the exchange leverage ratio. And when me and Key were doing this, this video, he said, once you get to 0.2, it's way over leveraged. And we see that time and time again. It just, and we did this a while back. And now that we're here, 
we can see that, yeah, 0 0.18, 0 0.19, and then all of a sudden it just kind of just exploded. And we had 0 0.2 like it was no big deal. Then they said, okay, we got over leverage, like it liquidated, it fell back. They did it again, 0 0.2, and then it fell down because everybody got liquidated. And now look what's happening. They're going up again. These leverage positions, though, can be used for not only longs, but also shorts. So if there's a lot of people shorting and getting leverage, you can try it but I wouldn't recommend it. And uh, everybody thinks they know where the market's going until they get liquidated. And then lastly, market value to realize value. It's not really important, but it's pretty much falling on track. So that's what we have for that piece. And then also, if we take a look at my favorite, the Pi Cycle Top, this has been right retroactively three times and then right concurrently the fourth time, around around 20 of April or somewhere on there, when we had a, a Bitcoin price around 67,000. But remember, when the 111 day moving average, which is that, line in gold crosses over the 350 day moving average moving average that's when we have what they call the bitcoin top and it happened twice in 2013 once in 2017 and once in 2021 and right now where we are at we're still not crossed over so that's good news at least to look at at least we haven't had a blow off top per se but then we take a look at some other data points which is that this traditional markets are hurting and once they hurt, you know who else who also hurts us because the traditional market players, they're not like us. They don't believe in crypto. So for them, and I really need you to remember this hedge funds, traditional markets, when they come in here and these corporate entities, they're not here to change the world. They're here to change their pocketbook. So they're going to dump on you. They're going to sell. And that's OK, because that's the name of the game. We're just investors and it's not about emotions just a trade so when we take a look over here then yeah same thing actually in the last four hours looks like a little green candle amazing 47 two that's pretty good but if we take if we go scroll down a little bit and we take a look at uh, the rsi we're right in the middle uh, we're not oversold we're not overbought kind of in the middle a little bit lower on the oversold but it's not reached there yet and then if we take a look at the macd underneath we can see that those haven't crossed over as well. So we're still in the red. So expect a little bit more pain on the horizon. So that is our data points. Now what we really need to do is to define the bear market because lately I see, I've seen it all. I mean, I haven't seen a lot. I've seen a lot, not all. But you can see that people will say, you know what? We dropped 5%, bear market. You know what? Uh, Elon Musk came out and said this, bear market. And sure. Let's just define it. Let's just try to define it and then we can kind of go from there. So let's define what a bear market is. This is what we got. Investopedia kind of lays it out like this. They go, look, this is for traditionals, but a bear market, little market experiences, prolonged price declines. Check. A condition in which securities, okay, securities stocks, prices fall 20% or more from recent highs. Check, check. Widespread pessimism and negative investor sentiment. Check, check, check. So we've got three checks right here. And let me just back up. I know it says securities, but let's just put in the realm of, of crypto. And let's talk about price falls and sentiment. Well, there was an article that just came out four hours ago, and it just put it out pretty much like this. It's a pretty balanced article, actually. It says Bitcoin is trading for 149% higher than it was on this day last year. That's great. However, monthly stats show Bitcoin is down 26% and more than 30% from the all-time high. So 67,000 down to 47,000. Yeah, okay, gotcha. So that checks off that first one. Ethereum is down almost 12% this week, and 30-day stats show ETH has lost almost 20%, or 17.5%. Okay, so another check. ETH is still up year-to-date as the price for ETH is over 550%, higher than this time last year. So if we just zoom out, still looking pretty good. But in the short term, it's looking pretty bearish. And then if we also take a look at this, this was the thing that I was always concerned about, which was the ETFs, uh, the futures. And everybody was excited about it. I was like, well, it's good and we'll track it, but I don't really think it's great. Remember the lessons of history uh, in 2017, December 17, 2017, somewhere around there, CBOE launched their futures. And guess what it did? It caused us to go into a nice little crypto winter. So when this thing came about in October 27th for pro shares, I was like, eh, I don't really know if this is a great thing. And uh, I won't go in the article, but it's just one of those deals like if you're going to manipulate the market, futures is a great place to start. 
and uh, second richest man in uh, Mexico. I forgot the guy's name right now. Excuse me. But he said the same thing. He goes, I've been playing the crypt in the market in the market for decades. And I can tell you the futures is a great place to manipulate everything. And then I will just finish this up with a nice little story. I was over on uh, Crypto Mondays, which is here in, in Puerto Rico. And it's pretty nice. Good people come out and they, they, they we mingle and talk about crypto and everything else. And there was this guy here. Nice guy, John Devine. And uh, he was a broker, or no, a, um, a trader. And he was talking heavily about options, futures, and the optimized hodl and everything else. And it was interesting, and it was, but uh, <laughs> I uh, was by my friend, we'll call him Pete. And Pete was next to me in the back of the room. And as this guy was talking, uh, this guy, what's his name? Uh, John. And uh, he was talking about how, you know, futures is great and we can do these things and we can, you know, uh, basically we can move these markets. And my friend Pete next to me was like, yeah, that's right, because you move the markets and you manipulate everything and F this and F that and da da da. And it was, and it was like that scene in like, it was almost like that scene in uh, the big short where the guy stands up. He's like, I got a question. Why are you manipulating and messing everything up and da da da. And I was like, oof, okay. So we walked out and, uh, and and that was it. And it did have a nice little ring to it uh, when we were talking about how the futures market really does manipulate. And then we talked about uh, J Jamie Dimon and Chase and how they manipulated uh, the, the metals market and silver and gold, how they've been doing it for decades and how they only get slapped in the wrist and it just manipulates everything in a futures market for for metals so why wouldn't it be any different from crypto which leads me to another point of why can't we get this uh um bitcoin spot etf approved i know people think this is the greatest thing for futures but i don't believe it so let me just think about that in the comment section and let's move on to some good news so i know that was pretty bleak bear with me so this is going on right now. And when I reported this a couple of weeks ago, this was on December 1st, it, it talked about CEOs and insiders sell. And they're, they've are they sold a record $69 billion. When the money gets printed, where do you think it goes to first? It goes to these, these guys. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, we're in a free society. Great, good for them. But once they get their hands on this money and they've you know done the things they want to do with it, now they're going to sell off and dump it onto us. And if this was... If this was a crypto project, we would have called this a pump and dump, but whatever. So on this one, just as a reminder, CEOs and corporate insiders have sold a record $69 billion in stock in 2021 as looming tax hikes and lofty share prices encourage many to take profits. Sales by insiders are up 30% and 69% uh, to 69 billion, up 79% versus a 10-year average. The selling is likely to increase even more as December is an active month for sales due to tax planning, which reminded me of this tweet my friend Simon Yu, who's the CEO of StormX, put out. He said, interesting perspective. I heard from a fund manager friend yesterday. Apparently, most funds have sold or are in the process of selling assets because 2021 was such a monster year for everyone. They are looking or locking in their profits for the year so they can say our fund did 700%, etc. So if you think, if you don't think there's some more pain coming on the horizon, I mean, maybe not, but this is just the information that I see. And lastly, I will just say this. I know it sucks, especially if you're new to this, but I want to remind everybody of when I got in was right around here when everything was going to the moon. I thought I was a genius because I bought Bitcoin around 8 and then 12 and then 17. And then it just kind of dumped off like this. And, and I did, I, I always say this, this is where all my money was made. It was made in the last four years of me just dollar cost averaging in and then it would and then as time went on if i needed something i would dollar cost average out and i would dollar cost average in and then i would dollar cost average out and then mostly i've just been a holdler i only sell things when i need we need something and it's actually on an upswing i will not sell on a pullback i just cannot do it and um this is the thing this is how i've made all my money and i know right now it seems pretty awful and I know we all want it today. And we all want it today. Like we want those riches today because we're like, I, I deserve this and I've been working and I've been an investor, I've done my due diligence. But just zoom out. Just zoom out because it's all gonna be all right. I know it's not gonna happen tomorrow, but 
you know what, in the long run, I think we'll all be pretty good. And then lastly, I will just say, if you have taken profits out, it might be a good idea. If you're trying to beat inflation, don't just have your cash sitting in your bank account because it's just going to be inflation away. We already talked about that. If you're looking for just a, someplace safe to put your, your money, uh, check out Masterworks. It's always down here, right here. And uh, they have they are an uncorrelated to all markets, crypto, S&P, uh, even the housing market crash of 2008. This is investing in fractionalized art and just uh, links in the description. So that's just something to take a look at. So let me just think about that in the comments section. And let's move on to our next piece, the metaverse. A little bit of uh, other good news. So this I thought was pretty cool. Nike acquires virtual sneaker creator, RTFKT. I never heard as it pushes deeper into the metaverse. So just so you know, uh, Nike said late uh, today that it has acquired RTKFT, a digital creator of virtual sneakers, collectibles, and accessories. Earlier this year, Nike filed uh, seven trademarks, trademark applications related to its goal to create and sell virtual sneakers and apparel. I cannot stress this enough how big I believe commerce, play to earn, and metaverse will be. It also partnered with the Roblox video game platform to launch Nike Land. I played Roblox. It's a great game. Play with my grandson. It's fun. Digital world for Nike fans to play games, connect, and dress their avatars in virtual apparel via a digital showroom. If you're taking a look at, at, at a good project that's going from uh, virtual uh, wear, virtual different things that you can actually purchase out, look at uh, Boson Protocol. They're doing that. Uh, Nike CEO and President John Donahue said this, and we'll finish up. Our plan is to invest in the RTFKT brand, serve and grow their innovative and creative communities, and extend Nike's digital footprint and capabilities. You have to understand something. These, There's a reason why Coca-Cola still puts ads everywhere. There's a reason why Apple still has commercials and ads everywhere, because they know that they still need to market, and when the people, wherever the people's eyeballs are, that's where they're going to put their brand and their products into. So in the very beginning was radio, then it was TV, then all of a sudden it was social media, and now the next part's gonna be metaverse. So if you don't think these things are gonna happen, I'm pretty sure they are. Could be wrong, but uh, that's it. Which leads me actually to my to my next point. Because I'm a big, I'm trying to get more into the, the play to earn. This I think is gonna be big. Japan's Elemental Knights online game to release play to earn metaverse, metaverse version. Why am I bringing this to your attention? Because this game, uh, Elemental Knights, they already have a working game on iOS, on Android, on PlayStation, and on the Nintendo Switch. And they're like, well, that's great. We're going to bring all of our customers and we're going to bring them all the way over to this new online metaverse called, uh, I think it's called Genso Kishi. I think I said that right. And uh, they're going to do this big whole thing moving over. So they've already got all these people going to come over like this. I did a deep dive actually uh, over on Dan Clips. I'll release that later. And you can check that out. Right now it's unlisted. And then uh, I think it's going to be big because it's built on Polygon. So it's not super expensive for their NFTs and their land buys and the things they want to do. And the fact that they're actually partnering up with Polygon and Polygon Studios to bring this to you. So I think this could be a big thing. We'll see how it all works out. Let me know what you think of the comments section. Let's finish up lastly, quickly with the petition. So look, I get a lot of emails, not a lot. I get some emails where people are like, hey, I can't swap out my uh, BQX or Ethos or, or whatever. I think it was called BQ, yeah, BQS tokens to the VGX 2.0. And that ship sailed a long time ago. And I've been referring them to customer service, but I'm telling you right now, they are not going to swap you had a long time to do it and you didn't get it done and then that's a bummer maybe you didn't hear it some people are like oh, i was in the hospital i couldn't do it so there is a place you can sign a petition this is not by me this is by someone else that did this and i'm going to link that in the description go for the petition so if you're going to ask me about to contact steve the ceo and see if he'll swap your tokens it's not going to happen but if you sign a petition let's let your voice be heard and go from there. I am fair and as balanced as I possibly can. So this is a petition and I'll direct everybody to this one to sign it and sign out to Voyager. So if you have any tokens, they'll may listen to you. And that's it. So look, I know it's a long one, a lot of things going on, but I try to make this as clear as possible. Yes, it looks like we're a little bit in bearish territory. I don't think we're gonna last too long. I think January is right around the corner, February. I expected fireworks, probably not gonna happen unless something Something else miraculous comes out, but 
think December is not going to be a great month. I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong, but that's it. So if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. And that's it for today. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one.